from Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering EMC World 2016, brought to you by EMC. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone, you are watching theCUBE. We are live here on the ground in Las Vegas for the next three days for EMC World 2016. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, and we have two cubes here, again, for the second or third year, I can't remember, but we have two cubes, third double year. barrel shotgun third year, two cubes. of signal. Stu Miniman, Brian Grace will be manning cube number two. Dave and I will hold down cube number one, and again, live coverage. This is our seventh year going back to EMC World 2010 in Boston when we kicked off the Cube as part of SiliconANGLE Media's continuous coverage. First SiliconANGLE Cube had the Cube at South by Southwest, kind of as a prototype, and then got it going here at EMC World. Dave, seven years, and one thing that's been constant, guys, is Joe Tucci. And here today, a significant moment in history, the torch has been passed to the new generation of EMCers under the leadership of Michael Dell, who's only 50 years old, and Joe Tucci really gave a heartfelt goodbye on his last time on stage as the EMC chairman and CEO, as the Dell EMC merger still underway. Guys, thoughts about this EMC world? What is so strategic? What is the opportunity? Can they do it? Will the merger happen? Thoughts on Joe Tucci? Well, so back in 2010, John, when we, when we launched the first you know, live production cube, we were coming out of the, the downturn, and EMC was actually in a very good position. They had a number of assets, not the least of which, of course, was v VMware. Uh, we all know the story, at least inside of SiliconANGLE Wikibon, the Stu signed the original VMware NDA, but that asset powered EMC for the better part of, of this decade. What we're now seeing, I think, and Brian and Stu would love your thoughts on this, is we're seeing the cloudification of enterprise IT, the consumerization of IT, and it's clearly hollowing out the high margin businesses of the likes of IBM and EMC and certainly HPE, and each of the, those companies that I just mentioned, as well as others, Cisco and others, has their own strategy in terms of how to deal with that. EMC's, of course, is to be acquired by Dell, which is, my view anyway, what you guys think, the end of an era. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I, you know, we, we saw the original sort of four horsemen of the internet. It was Sun and, and EMC and Cisco and Intel. Uh, we've seen Chambers and now Tucci sort of moving on from that. Um, you know, right now Amazon is, is the lead dog. They're setting the rules. They're not the largest, but boy, they're setting the rules. And, and this show is really about that transition of where does uh, the, the traditional hardware-centric companies go from here? Uh, will customers follow the cloud route? Will they follow the on-premises data route? Uh, so it's a big decision point for both you know, the companies, but also for customers. They've got to figure out where they want to go next. Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, first of all, I mean, it's my 14th year uh, at this show, and it's changed a lot. I mean, Joe Tucci talked about uh, the first year it was Wizards, uh, you know, we used to joke, you know, there's no salesmen, there's no ties, uh, you know, uh, and this show, you know, started out with a very strong technical roots, get the engineers out. I was actually in EMC engineering, uh, used to come, used to love giving presentations, talking to the users, kind of the once a year I got you know, out of the office to go see what was going on. Look at where we are now, it's 10,000 people, it's down a little bit from the last couple of years, um, but you know, very strategic in the industry, uh, what, what, what's going on in the space. In the portfolio, the broad portfolio that is in the future going to be called the Dell Technologies uh, companies, uh, kind of replaces the old federation Stu that we talked Dave, about. Stu and Dave, I want to get your thoughts because I think this is really important. The Joe Tucci goodbye, I think it's worth talking about because Dave, you knew EMC when you were at IDC, when they had that small building on Route 9. Stu, again, you were there at engineering way back in the day. Brian, you were most recently at EMC trying to get that whole DevOps movement. It's funny to see that's in the main stage being kicked out as, as Michael Dell's really calling card. But the, the legacy of Joe Tucci and the cult of Joe Tucci, he got a standing ovation and he's really loved and revered by the customers but also by the industry, he, he took EMC from a box moving storage company, transformed them, we saw Jeremy Burton come on in 2010, obviously amped up the marketing, but transformed the company, he buys VMware, Stu, you signed the original NDA as an employee of, of EMC, as Dave pointed out, but the, the cult of Joe Tucci and the transformation of EMC and the legacy that it leaves behind and the young whippersnapper in Michael Dell who takes the torch and gave a pretty damn good speech. He talked about DevOps. He was talking about Agile. You can see that he knows his stuff. This is a guy with a spring and a step who's got a lot of mileage in the tank. Dave, your thoughts? Well, Joe Tucci took EMC from sort of 
brash teenager to, to adults. Uh, and interestingly, many of the people that were part of the brash teenage culture are st still here. You know, Billy Scandal now running sales, he's been here for a long, long time, but many people aren't. And Joe, under Joe's leadership, EMC transformed the company. Stu, you lived through that transformation. Brian, you were sort of partners, you saw the sort of tail end of that transformation. And now, like you said, John, Michael Dell laid out this vision of the future. He was talking about 2031, what the world is going to look like, and essentially, basically, what I heard was Dell and EMC, or Dell Technologies, is going to be an arms dealer for the next generation well, of digital of technology. Dave, legacy of Joe Tucci. Will he have the legacy? Um, did the Federation work? This merger, he yeah. says, is looking bright stew. So, so John, I mean, first of all, when Joe Tucci took the baton from Mike Rutgers, we were entering the big, you know, dot com, com burst. I mean, so there were many that didn't know if Joe would last that first year. Fifteen years later, you look at where EMC is, you know, where they sit in the ecosystem. They've, they've done a really good job. You know, Joe has to be commended for that. Had the big downturn in 07, 08, um, and you know, EMC is, you know, what, 60,000 people. Uh, you know, the portfolio of companies they had, uh, they, they are a good, solid company. He had that, a heartfelt that, you know, goodbye. Very, very you can almost critical. see a tear in his eye up on stage. But you know, I got to say, Joe Tucci is like a commander. I've seen him in the trenches. He's pounding the flesh. He's loved. He loves this show. He loves EMC. It's almost a bittersweet goodbye that it wasn't uh, a bigger bang other than the merger. Some say that was a defeat of the Federation. Guys, well, it, what, it what was in many respects. I mean, he's he's ready to go. I mean, he basically capitulated and said, "All right, I can't. You know, we can't survive as a public company. At least it's not you know advantageous for us. So we're going to go out on our own terms. So I mean, Joe Tucci will certainly have a better legacy than, for example, Carly Fiorina, but. You know what, look at some of the other greats in this industry. Uh, uh, Ken Olson, Edson DeCastro. De um, Larry Ellis is still around. You know, Will, Joe Tucci, uh, to me, similar. You know, great legacy, not Hall a founder. Hall of Famer, yes or no? Not a, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer, no question about it. You know, no question about it. But, but you know what, but he was a steward over the transformation of EMC, but the outcome that he desired, I don't think he achieved. I think the Federation vision you know, it didn't happen. And well, if it's going to happen forces. now, it's going to happen under Michael Well, market Dell. forces, we are speculating the cube about the Federation. I asked him the question about, you know, the, the ecosystem seemed to kind of reject. We saw that at VMware. Brian, you were inside EMC during the DevOps movement. It was kind of, it seemed like a bunch of false starts. It seemed like hurry up, go fast, wait. Um, and then ultimately you saw that they really didn't get the kind of traction, but Dell certainly has their eye on IoT. Could, well, and could, could EMC have done it differently? In your opinion. Well, you know, I'll answer both your questions. I think, you know, the, the whole thing with the Federation is whether you, you think it was successful or not, I think it's going to come down, people look back on it and they'll say, it had a lot of great vision, it had a lot of great technology, they never quite Great revenue. <laughs> yeah, they're good <laughs> revenues. They didn't quite figure out how to make that, that vision be transactionable. And I think that's, that's really the question that, you know, as you look at, at Dell Technologies going forward, can they transaction this, this huge portfolio or does it continue to remain sort of silos? I think in terms of Joe, I mean, you got to put Joe right up there with, with somebody like a Lou Gertzner and you say, look, you know, huge company, went through a big transition, you know, went with a very different model. It wasn't just, you know, we're going to get into something adjacent. Um, you know, and, and I think he's going he's to go down as, as a, you know, a big part of what happened with yeah. VMware's story. So guys, I want to get your thoughts on the keynote. We saw the Vision 10X, and referenced the iPod, 3G networks coming online, Itanium, Sun, uh, E25K for the data center, all the legacy relics, as Dell said but he pointed out that it's going to be a 10x shift every five years. Can EMC, is EMC Stu in a position, Brian Stu in particular, in a position to kind of make those kinds of gains over the next five years? And, do you th what, and what does Dell have to pull out of his hat to make that happen? Yeah, so, so John, first, I, I guess I'll have a little critique uh, about what they had there. It sounded like the server presentations we've been hearing for years. We're following Moore's law, uh, we understand how things going. The IoT, uh, you know, billions of devices is good, um, but uh, when I heard that, you know, the, the, the enemy that got mentioned a number of times, it was HP. And I mean, HPE just split, they, they've got kind of their positioning and everything, but you know, if most, we ask, you know, where's the future and where do you have to fight yourself? Uh, hello, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, um, that needs to be where we're partnering and where we're not. Uh, Brian actually mentioned, you know, there's no mention of containers and Docker, uh, you know, in, in the presentation this morning. Um, there was plenty of cloud native and platforms in the Pivotal It was here, very high level. But there's not much Pivotal here. By the way, Pat Gelsinger, not here this week. Very little VMware. Pivotal, 
little bit of a presence here, uh, but I almost felt last year there was a lot of good discussions about applications and where they're going, and came back here, it's, you know, it's a new box for storage, it's some new software pieces. Um, the, the, the great and you seem to pick up some messaging from IBM too, Dave, systems of engagement, systems of insight, they didn't say cognitive, but essentially that's IBM. Internet pitch. of everything, which is Internet Cisco's, of everything, that's Cisco's, Cisco's messaging. Yeah. So again, is this an Oracle-like strategy, kind of co-opt everyone else and try to move the ball down the field? And again, the shot at HP, I thought Michael Dell, like a little, like a little kid smiling, <laughs> shrinking it, <laughs> HP shrinking their way to success, highlighting the Gartner Magic Quadrant as a reference point for innovation. I mean, I mean, come on, if you're horizontally scalable, doesn't it beg the question that Magic Quadrants are irrelevant? Well, it's interesting. I mean, guys, come on. It's interesting that he made those comments because here's a company, EMC, their core, core product portfolio is shrinking. Yeah. It was down what eight, ten percent yeah. last quarter. Um, the, the. Dell business, when it went private, was under you know, real attack. So now Michael can write his own narrative. That's the beauty of being private. The interesting thing is, EMC continued to spend on R&D. And you saw, we saw Jeremy in the analyst meeting this morning, typical mega launch, you know, messaging, product, product, product. So EMC continues to push the product roadmap. To your point, Brian, that will get them to a transactional business and allow them to continue. The, the problem is those curves that they showed, the S-curves of you know, the old business and the new business, the new business ain't growing fast enough and it's not big enough yet to offset the decline of the old. And that's the problem that all these companies has. And as I said earlier, each of these companies has a different strategy. IBM is starkly different than what you know, Dell and EMC are doing. Right. Well, and the, the, the other big question to bring into this is, you know, uh, you know, we're not. We, we, we covered the the initial acquisition. We looked at all of the the debt structure and where the money's going to go. You know, there was an announcement this morning about the VirtuStream cloud. And regardless of those details, you look at what that's competing against. Amazon putting a billion dollars a quarter. Google's putting in a billion dollars a quarter. Like. That's a different investment schedule against how you're going to sell versus saying, you know, am I doing RNA and or, you know R&D and M&A? You know, it's really hard to compare what those yeah. two things are going to look like. So Amazon's guys, free cash flow doubled last quarter from yeah. like three billion and change to six billion and change. Yeah, and right. shout out to Wikibon guys. You guys did a great job. You were the first to call Dave. We talked about them years ago. I mean, it feels like that whole presentation was cubed from three years ago. Uh, Agile, DevOps, you called Amazon being way over 10 billion. Well, Jeremy this morning said about VirtuStream, once you hit ex exabyte scale, you, you start to throw off you know, major economies of scale. I'm skeptical, I, mean, I don't think there's any way that VirtuStream is going to be able to compete, at least in the near term, with Amazon on scale. They're going to have to compete on solutions and value. So well, a couple, yeah. couple things I saw, guys, I want to get your thoughts on the last couple of minutes. David Goulden explicitly called out um, he addressed it. Potential concern, some of you might have potential concern that we're not, the pace of innovation is slowed down. He explicitly called out, I'm saying to myself, oh, thanks for highlighting that for me, he's slow. <laughs> so he almost had to correct. It was almost as if they're getting that feedback. Did they slow down pace of innovation in this merger? Obviously there might be some FUD with customers, the competition's taking advantage of it. Thoughts? Well, innovation at EMC, you guys were there, to me as an outside observer, largely involves making incremental improvements to existing products so that they can keep customers going down a journey. Right. It's, I mean, that's really where they focus it's, it's their more, Moore's law meets M&A, you know. <laughs> yeah, Moore's right. law yeah. takes care of the incremental yeah. stuff and M&A goes and buys you into those new markets. Yeah, and so. So they saw the two groups come and the other note was cloud and traditional, we heard traditional, you know, traditional IT, efficiency, performance, and then cloud native, that's where we were in the DevOps, and then they kind of highlighted Google and said, oh, we created two groups for that. Um, are to they, their credit, they're fighting that battle. I mean, well, they well, are, they did make you know. those calls. I mean, we pointed that on the cube. Good props to them. But is it relevant in this market? Can EMC pull it off? And can they be the preferred infrastructure company for this digital transformation? That's I mean, the question. I mean, to me, Dell is the answer there because Dell gives them a supply chain and a cost infrastructure that can compete with the likes of Amazon. Without Dell and without Michael at the helm, I, I, this would be a much uglier situation, in my view. How you guys feel about that? Yeah, so so I mean, we haven't talked much about kind of the converged infrastructure, hyperconverged, of right. course, a big focus area of EMC, um, and. I look at this as Dell buys EMC and it helps them fight off the ODMs. So they need to get into service providers, they need to get to the class of people that say, I want hyperscale, uh, but I can't just buy some no-name white box and make it worth it. I don't have the skill set, so how much services do I need from Dell? Can Dell get me the economics? I mean, Dave, you did some really good analysis looking at the, 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 the margins that Dell lives on versus EMC, and what is that going to mean for the shift of the culture? What's that going to mean to the overall workforce? Um, you know, these next year or two, it, it's going to be a little bit of pain as they work through that portfolio. Okay, so new categories are being created, but I want to get your thoughts, final 
Alex's point for the segment is, IT, traditional IT certainly will go hybrid cloud. We see that extension of the data center. Certainly there's lots of traditional kind of cloud native. But the real battleground that's emerging and across every event we go to is IoT. IoT is a new way, it's a data center at the edge. We heard edge to core to cloud is their messaging. Is it relevant, guys? And, and talk about this IoT battle they call Internet of Everything, which is original Cisco's messaging, but that is connected devices. What is the battleground for IoT look like? Well, for, for me right now, I think uh, you know, a number of companies have laid out a pretty, pretty uh, substantial. IBM has, um, Amazon has, Microsoft's beginning to through Azure. A HP Sales, is? Salesforce, yeah, HP to a certain extent. I didn't really hear an IoT strategy. I heard IoT is a big buzzword, we think it's going to grow a lot. <laughs> it's the future. Uh, I, yeah, I, I didn't hear anything <laughs> that, that would tell me to say, hey, I should call Dell Technologies about my IoT strategy at this point. Stu, thoughts on IoT? Yeah, uh, I, I really agree with Brian on that. Um, the, the thing that stood out to me more is if you look at the cloud strategy that they laid out, it reminds me of what we're hearing from the likes of IBM and Oracle, which is we've got our on-premises environment and, and cloud's going to be an extension of that, yeah. which is a hybrid message, but not, not sure that necessarily fits. Well, they're, they're just behind SoftLayer, you would yeah. agree, yeah. and Oracle's a whole different animal because of the software content. And we, and we heard new style of computing, which is kind of a rip off of HP's new style of IT. So again, the confluence of all the different trends here at EMC World, we're going to be talking with Michael Dell himself, David Goulden, Howard Elias, all the top executives, all the different groups, extracting the signal noise. This is theCUBE, we have two CUBEs on two different channels for wall-to-wall -wall coverage, a lot of flow coming out of the CUBE here in Las Vegas. Stay tuned, and stay tuned for more great coverage for three days, live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break. It's always fun to come back to the queue.